Hi everyone, Hope Sings today with composer Lisa Despain. Hello. Hi everybody. So, so Lisa is amazing. I'm going to let you tell her, I'm going to let her tell you about her and I'm going to get my pronouns right for the rest of the interview. But the top line of what I do is composer. I would say the first hat I wear is composer. Um, that's what I love the most. That's what I feel is my first voice. Um, jazz pianist is also my voice. I love to perform and I've been playing since I can't even remember not playing. Um, I do a lot of education. I think as all artists do, we put on all those different hats. Um, we put them all on. And I just knew it was an early, early on, I was attracted to sound. Um, I started playing when I was four years old. My parents had a player piano, one of those big antique pianos where they had a paper roller that you would roll over this gizmo that I still can't even figure out how it works. And you'd push the pedals and you'd play. You know, I just always wanted to play. I always was fascinated with sound. Um, I was hungry for it. I was a little aggressive. I mean, that was it. That's what drove me. And I did grow up in a culture where girls had certain um, scripts. And being an artist and having a career were not part of those societal scripts. Okay, let's just say that. Um, that said, I had an amazing family who kind of protected that art, even though they may or may not have been artists themselves. My parents were not artists, but they believed in allowing their, their kids to grow and find their own voices, no matter what that was. Well, then I fell into jazz when I was 14. And that was even more taboo um, because I grew up in a society where, you know, women hanging out in a jazz club and we didn't drink, we didn't smoke, there's no carousing, there's none of those kind of things. Yet here's a jazz artist and jazz at that time was very, very much associated with this, you know, underbelly culture. Mm -hmm. um, I started composing when I was in junior high. Um, I was in the junior high jazz band, and I didn't like the music we were doing. So I started transcribing and doing my own arrangements, and that pretty much taught me, again, the, the basics. It started me down the path of writing music and getting inside the music rather than just being a player alone, to get inside the composing and inside the constructs of the music. Well, theater paid the bills. Okay. It's kind of like I always did it. I remember in fifth grade, I was cast as Mother Abbess. <laughs> and that was my one and only role on the stage because I was a better piano player than I was a mother abbess. So I got up there saying, climb every mountain, and then got off and played the rest of the show. And I, I'll tell you this, I love to accompany singers. Interesting. It's, and, and it's something I love about the piano. I actually never really loved being the main artist. Mm -hmm. I think my dream was always to be a side man for Miles Davis. <laughs> and that in turn became being an accompanist because mm -hmm. I love that... Um, the interpretive thing. And what yeah. I discovered is that I love being the heart behind the singers, like when they give the intense, or not the intense, when they're, when they're acting the song and they're speaking these inner wants, you know, yeah. sometimes the word will say something, but their heart will say something else. And yeah. I get to be the truth teller, you right. know? What I want people to understand is what Lisa's talking about is mm -hmm. there are so many different ways for you to make a living in the arts. Oh, yeah. And she has cobbled together, I don't know if that's a, I don't mean that to be an insulting term. No, but she's a teacher. She is, an, a, she's um, at a university. She does private instruction. I imagine she works. She's doing something with Hamilton. Yeah, she's writing a musical herself.